Here we have a diagram. This diagram represents the fractional distillation of crude oil. Crude oil is a naturally occurring liquid found deep in the Earth's crust. It is a mixture of different hydrocarbons and is totally useless on its own. But the different hydrocarbons in the crude oil are each useful and we use them in everyday life. Fractional distillation is the process of separating the hydrocarbons from the crude oil. To do so, the crude oil is passed through a heater. This heater heats the crude oil to temperatures in excess of 400 degrees Celsius. Then, the evaporated crude oil is placed in a fractionating column. In this fractionating column, the hottest stuff goes straight to the bottom, where the temperature is still around 400 degrees Celsius. However, as you get further and further up the fractionating column, and further and further from the heat source, the temperature gradually cools down, until at the top we have temperatures nearer to 40 degrees Celsius. Because each of the hydrocarbons in the crude oil has a different oil in it. Because each of the hydrocarbons in crude oil has a different boiling point. Because each of the hydrocarbons in crude oil has a different boiling point. We are able to separate them. This is because they condense at different points along the fraction in column as the temperature gradually decreases. At these separate points where they condense, we place pumps and harvest the different fractions, hydrocarbons, fractions, and we use them separately in everyday life. This process of fractional distillation is possible because of the temperature gradient and because of the differences between the boiling points of the fractions. This allows us to, ta this allows us to take an utterly useless substance that we call crude oil and turn it into several useful fractions that we use in everyday life. Next video, Andy. Madam, voice audible and that. The plane can be stoned together. Yes, madam. Ah, one second, sir. Cracking. Cracking. Ah, cracking and reforming. Yes, sir. For crude oil to be used effectively by modern industry, it has to be separated into its component parts and have impurities like sulfur removed. The most common method of refining crude is the process of fractional distillation. This involves heating crude oil to about 350 degrees Celsius to turn it into a mixture of gases. These are piped into a tall cylinder known as a fractional tower. Inside the tower, the very long carbon chain liquids such as bitumen and paraffin wax are piped away to be broken down elsewhere. The hydrocarbon gases rise up inside the tower, passing through a series of horizontal trays and baffles called bubble caps. The temperature at each tray is controlled so as to be at the exact temperature that a particular hydrocarbon will condense into a liquid. The distillation process is based on this fact. Different hydrocarbons condense out of the gas cloud when the temperature drops below their specific boiling point. The higher the gas rises in the tower, the lower the temperature becomes. The precise details are different at every refinery and depend on the type of crude oil being distilled. But at around 260 degrees, diesel condenses out of the gas. At around 180 degrees, kerosene condenses out. Petrol or gasoline condenses out at around 110 degrees, while petroleum gas is drawn off at the top. The distilled liquid from each level contains a mixture of alkanes, alkenes, and aromatic hydrocarbons with similar properties, and requires further refinement and processing to select specific molecules.
The quantities of the fractions initially produced in an oil refinery don't match up with what is needed by consumers. There is not much demand for the longer chain high molecular weight hydrocarbons, but a large demand for those of lower molecular weight, for example petrol. A process called cracking is used to produce more of the lower molecular weight hydrocarbons. This process breaks up the longer chains into smaller ones. There are many different industrial versions of cracking, but all rely on heating. When heated, the particles move much more quickly, and their rapid movement causes carbon-carbon bonds to break. The major forms of cracking are thermal cracking, catalytic or cat cracking, steam cracking, and hydrocracking. Because they differ in reaction conditions, the products of each type of cracking will vary. Most produce a mixture of saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. Thermal cracking is the simplest and oldest process. The mixture is heated to around 750 to 900 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 700 kilopascals. That is, around seven times atmospheric pressure. This process produces alkenes such as ethene and propene and leaves a heavy residue. The most effective process in creating lighter alkanes is called catalytic cracking. The long carbon bonds are broken by being heated to around 500 degrees Celsius in an oxygen-free environment in the presence of zeolite. This crystalline substance, made of aluminium, silicon and oxygen, acts as a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction or allows it to proceed at a lower temperature than would normally be required. During the process, the catalyst, usually in the form of a powder, is treated and reused over and over again. Catalytic cracking is the major source of hydrocarbons with 5 to 10 carbon atoms in the chain. The molecules most formed are the smaller alkanes used in petrol, such as propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane and octane, the components of liquid petroleum gas. In hydrocracking, crude oil is heated at very high pressure, usually around 5,000 kilopascals, in the presence of hydrogen with a metallic catalyst such as platinum, nickel or palladium. This process tends to produce saturated hydrocarbons such as shorter carbon chain alkanes because it adds a hydrogen atom to alkenes and aromatic hydrocarbons. It is a major source of kerosene jet fuel gasoline components, and LPG. In one method, thermal steam cracking, the hydrocarbon is diluted with steam and then briefly heated in a very hot furnace, around 850 degrees Celsius, without oxygen. The reaction is only allowed to take place very briefly. Light hydrocarbons break down to the lighter alkenes, including ethene, propene and butene, which are useful for plastics manufacturing. Heavier hydrocarbons break down to some of these, but also give products rich in aromatic hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons suitable for inclusion in petrol or diesel. Higher cracking temperature favors the production of ethene and benzene, in the coking unit, bitumen is heated and broken down into petrol alkanes and diesel fuel, leaving behind coke, a fused combination of carbon and ash. Coke can be used as a smokeless fuel. Reforming involves the breaking of straight chain alkanes into branched alkanes. The branched chain alkanes in the 6 to 10 carbon atom range are preferred as car fuel. These alkanes vaporize easily in the engine's combustion chamber without forming droplets and are less prone to premature ignition which affects the engine's operation. 
Smaller hydrocarbons can also be treated to form longer carbon Okay, that's it, Manu. Thank you so much, Vamshi, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, can we find the links? Hmm? Sir, li links to share. One minute. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, sir. Now, so... So that's that's about the fractional distillation of crude oil or petroleum. Okay. And after seeing the videos, there's a brief idea to all of you about how the procurement of the petrol, diesel, kerosene, various fuels for uh, the uh, applications, umpteen applications are being procured. Okay. Now we shall... Uh, after seeing all the videos, uh, it's just a brief introduction, but then we, we will we will make it into the flow chart so that you'll get more clarity on how uh, the That's entire it. thing uh, is. Link up a chart box for process. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, what you realize is that just check. Uh, now I'll just give the flow charts for clarity. So yesterday you you saw an on-site operation of the extraction of crude oil or petroleum. Okay, so let's start in a uh, organized way to understand what all we have done activity in the past uh, one or two hours, one hour I suppose. Okay in all the presentations. I'll conclude the content of the presentations. The first thing we have seen is, uh, we are now focusing on the main one. We are talking about the liquid fuels in which we, we are talking about the extraction of crude oil or petroleum. Sorry? Again, Nina Chesan, liquid fuel. Crude oil, petroleum, fossil fuel, fast degrading, so it is getting exhausted. So it is a non-renewable energy source. Sir, chala elanunchi kerosene avani varta domestic fuels kinda. So it is a conventional energy source. So non-renewable conventional energy source is the exact word that can be put because it is obtained from the degradation of the fossil fossils. So it is also called as the fossil fuel. In yesterday's class, you have got a lot of clarity, is it not? You might have seen how they have shown um, the degradation of the plant and animal decay, okay, or, or, or hundreds of years uh, for high, at a high pressures and temperatures and how these fossil fuels are being formed, okay? After understanding that, I need to just pin on what is important for me uh, to write in the exam. This goes as part of your notes. So this crude oil or petroleum contains mainly hydrocarbons. This is what I keep telling you. Any fuel, if you are saying, uttering the word I have a fuel, then it is a hydrocarbon. Main composition is carbon and hydrogen. Along with that, there are other optically active compounds like sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, that's the main composition of that crude oil or petroleum. Of course, it is almost black color okay brownish black in color and a very thick murkier liquid not the petrol or diesel what we are fetching in our uh, at, at the petrol bunks okay or the filling stations is the refined best quality material I have on hand but otherwise what you'll be surprised is that the uh, crude oil or petroleum that is getting uh, extracted is actually a viscous liquid nearly a viscous liquid okay blackish or dark brown in color and the composition of uh, is carbon is 79.5 percent to 87.1 percent hydrogen is 11.5 to 14.8 sulfur is 0.1 to 3.5 nitrogen and oxygen are 0.1 to 0.5 percent okay so the, this is the composition of crude oil or petrol 
I am not much focusing on it because uh, generally they will not ask the elemental composition of the uh, petrol. Okay, crude oil. Uh, it is not petrol. It is petroleum. Okay. Now I am pinning on the main activity. Yesterday you have seen how they are making rigs onto the uh, beds and how they are extracting the uh, fossil fuels. Okay. So what you have understood yesterday that after making rigs, it, it is actually the natural gas that first comes out. Okay. Uh, did you ever see uh, there is like a burning flame on the top of a, of a pipe or a tower uh, at the places where the extraction is being done. Okay. Uh, indicating the place where the extraction is being done. Okay. And it's a natural gas that first comes out followed by the crude oil or petroleum. Okay. Due to hydraulic pressure. Okay. So if I, if I want to procure that crude oil or petroleum, it is done in two stages. The first one is uh, an on-site operation in which the mining or extraction of the crude oil or petroleum is done. Okay. Uh, in our neighboring state, uh, actually the Krishna Godavari Basin Reliance is one company which does a lot of mining of uh, this crude oil or petroleum. Okay. Okay. Uh, other uh, our the, that is a private company of course but uh, there are other companies like oil uh, oil india limited okay uh, ongc oil and natural gas uh, and all are the public sector companies which are very actively involved in uh, mining of the crude oil or petroleum in our country it is an on site operation okay and uh, in the off site operations the refining of petroleum is done. We'll be focusing much on the refining of the crude oil or petroleum. Okay. okay. Hope I, I hope you have just uh, gave, uh, given yourself some time to understand what we are talking. Okay. So, because the mining or extraction of petroleum is not a asked question, but a discussed session. Okay. I'm not giving much importance. I'll just give you an overall operation. So, uh, after making breaks onto the uh, oceanic or seabed, what will happen? The crude oil or petroleum is extracted or it is mining is done. Okay. After doing that, what I will do is this crude oil will be in combination with seawater. Okay. Or alkaline water. So crude oil plus um, water, salt water emulsion will be there. Okay. Water and this crude oil are present as emulsion. Okay. So after that, what I'll do, uh, I'll just leave that crude oil and salt water emulsion in huge tanks. Okay. And the anti water extraction, Jason Tarvata, Emotundi emulsion laga on to the need to they irigoda thick, idemo salt water. You don't allow on to the okay. Nilo Nilo no oil calci by baga oka thick solution laga on to this solution laga on to. Okay. That I will leave them in the tanks. Okay. I leave them in the tanks. This is in petrochemical industry. The refining will be uh, processed. So in petroleum industry, what they will do? They will leave that emulsion like that. Okay. Um, so that uh, any undissolved matter like salt, salt, any uh, suspended impurities are all removed first. Okay. After that, uh, what they will do? They will centrifuge everything. Okay. What they do? They do the centrifugation. Okay. So that the bottom will be containing all the undissolved materials and the top liquid is taken in by doing the centrifugation. Okay. Hope you have seen the centrifugation apparatus anytime. 
okay at high speed they will rotate and they will take away the supernatant liquid okay after removing the supernatant liquid which is an emulsion of crude oil or petroleum what they will do the first activity they they will do is they remove obviously water okay so removal of water is done by a method called as potterell's method okay this might be a bit question one or once or twice they have asked so i am i am writing this okay removal of water in that emulsion is done by a process called as potterell's c o t t r e l l s potterell's method okay in this sir crude oil or petroleum emulsion edaithe vachindo dani nok pedda tank lo vadileste kinda dissolve kaani chattanta kinda undipothu tarvata em chestaru gabba centrifugation chestaru ante ok sari baaga tippite speed lo em avutundi kinda chetta raadu paina liquid bayitiki vachestundi aa liquid em untundi crude oil salt water emulsion laaga untundi dantlo first task em chestaru water ni teesestaru okay so idi idi bit question okay water ne ela teestaru potterell's method dwara teestaru okay so what is potterell's method fine what they will do uh, see, first they will add some chemical compounds so that um, actually it helps in little thinning of the solution okay after that what they will do uh, they will pass this water and salt emulsion through electric plates okay through electric highly charged electric plates okay the emulsion is passed through highly charged electric plates okay so what will happen because pure water is actually non conducting material hope you all know okay what is the conducting material uh it is water plus salt okay what will happen this uh they'll they'll take the they'll take the emulsion and pass through them at a very uh, good uh, reasonable speed but these plates are highly charged what will happen the water moves towards the uh, plates whereas the oil moves towards the center okay and that's how i will remove water from the uh, emulsion by potterell's method okay what they do they'll take the highly charged plates and pass this emulsion from top bottom up what will happen water being ionic in nature will move towards the electrodes okay whereas the crude oil or petroleum being organic in nature will flow from the center that's how i'll remove water from the emulsion okay this method of removal of water from crude oil emulsion uh, salt water emulsion is called as potterell's method okay so highly charged electric plates are used um, in the potterell's method. okay so that's the discussion generally they have not, never ever asked the process not much but uh they are removing water by potterell's method okay that's the important big question okay if after that after removing the water from the emulsion there is no more water they will add few more deemulsifying agents and they'll get the crude oil separated from the uh, emulsion salt water emulsion okay after that what they will do they will remove sulfur and other impurities that are present first aim is to remove sulfur nacl and mgcl okay removal of sulfur is important because i already told with you okay one of the major hiccup in um in the petroleum industry is h2s gas okay what is h2s gas does it reacts with the machinery of the petrochemical industry and forms that iron sulfide okay iron sulfide that is formed will actually begin the corrosion because this iron sulfide is porous and um it, it helps further corrosion to take place so first that is the point 
The other point is sulfur is also present in this crude oil. So they want to remove the sulfur. So the next task is after removing water, the next, next task is removal of sulfur. Okay. Sulfur is remover, removed using copper compounds, particularly copper oxide is added. Okay. So removal of sulfur is done by adding copper oxide. Copper oxide. What will happen? The sulfur that is present in the crude oil reacts with the copper oxide to form copper sulfide. Okay. Copper sulfide precipitate is formed. And that's how sulfur is removed. Okay. So that's going to be the second step of the refining process. Okay. So what's the first step? First step is removal of uh, water from the emulsion. After that, removal of sulfur. Okay, how, uh, how sulfur is removed? By adding, adding is correct, okay, adding of copper oxide compound and removing it by converting into copper sulfur. Okay, this is the second one. The third one is Removal of salt light. Removal of salt like NaCl or MgCl2 etc. is done by adding desalting agents. By adding desalting agents. Okay, that's how they remove these salts. Okay, uh, what they do, they because these are salts, um, they'll add, take the acidic basic compounds and they try to, uh, so at times they add reagents like even EDTA to remove the salts. Okay, so they are, they are doing the desalting uh, salts addition and that's how they remove this. And these are the three things that are first basically done for putting this crude oil for fractional distillation. In Japan, crude oil or petroleum extractions in Tarvata, either emulsion undo, then low, three steps unte. Okay, tainted removal of water, removal of sulfur, removal of salts. Removal of water, ela chestaru, water else method lo chestaru. A put in chestaru, a crude oil water emulsion ni. A heavy electric plates majalon pastures napremo tundi water uh, ionic in nature kada salt water adi uh, uh, plates ki degar ki bedi po tundi uh, organic compound kada crude oil adi majalon chiti sista okay now uh, ave add chesin tarvata inka dml spying agents add chesi water ni first chi sista next major thing emu tundi ante sulfur ni tisada chala telsin kada huge hiccup sulfur so, in just the copper oxide ni add just the. In fact, copper compounds in antaru general ga. They are the best copper oxide. Sare copper oxide in just the copper sulfide form chesi sulfur ni thesis. Okay, so all important ga first lo chesis the process. Tarva deve the salt cell nayo. Avani desalting agents ni ante complexing agents ni use chesi. Vatini thesis the. Okay, main ga desalting agents ante. Complexing reagents and accessing what in the system. Okay, so this is the preliminary step. After this, what they do is they I'll get crude oil without uh, any uh, dissolved salts, water, and other impurities. Okay, now I'll subject that crude oil without water, uh, sulfur, and other dissolved salts to fractional distillation okay definition of fractional distillation is important right so what is fractional distillation fractional distillation take down the definition fractional distillation it is separation of separation of
various fractions of various fractions of a liquid depending on their boiling range depending on their boiling range is called as fractional distribution okay so what is fractional distillation separation of various fractions of a liquid depending on their boiling range is called as fractional distillation this is what just now two videos i have shown you okay so what i do fractional distillation a very simple and easy process i do okay what you have seen in the video okay there is a huge tower very long tower and you have seen the tower having bubble caps okay these are bubble caps the video clearly depicted that's the reason why i actually have requested sir, for this only okay there are huge bubble caps in that tower ante so pet the tower lo shelf shelf ki chinna chinna holes a holes ko ka cap alaga there is a tower okay why that I, why i made this tower thin and long there is one idea okay what i'll do at the bottom at the bottom um uh, i at the bottom i i just evaporate crude oil using steam i'll evaporate crude oil using steam okay that means uh, uh, here what i'll do i'll take the heater okay and i'll pass steam the heater box will uh, have crude oil in it and now the crude oil enters into the tower as vapor okay there is some amount that is present in this uh, box okay or the heater which does not evaporate even uh, after 450 degrees centigrade heating okay that is nothing but the tar what we lay the roads and all okay is that huge non evaporating material okay uh, after that they say it as bitumen also okay and uh, that remains here that i'll take it and use it for various applications but we are not interested it is the scrap material actually now the vapors are pushed into this tower okay so when the vapors are pushed through the towers what will happen the vapors which are having very low boiling point okay and a uh, very low molecular weight will quickly start pushing the bubble caps and move to the top of the tower okay and they come out as the uncondensed gases okay that is the first one is uncondensed gases so what are those uncondensed gases are lpg cylinder gas okay hung condensed gases that come out without they, they are always in the gaseous state okay so they are the lpg gas okay uh that's that's the lpg gas okay almost nearly to butane level okay ethane methane a propane and butane range will just come out uncondensed okay followed by the petroleum ether or pet ether fraction again this is a highly volatile compound so i hope you have done some experiments with ether i don't think you have done any experiments because of this lockdown okay the range goes from here the range is from c1 to c4 here the range is from c5 to c7 again they are used in petrochemical industry for emptying as a solvent okay uh, that is the importance we are not much interested this is followed by the major important star mark fraction that is petrol in the west they call it as gasoline okay gasoline fraction here the boiling range is from 40 to 
to around 120 degrees centigrade. 40 to 120 degrees centigrade. Okay. And the carbon is almost C5 to C9. Okay. Followed by uncondensed gases, pet ether, petrol or gasoline. Okay. Followed by diesel. Okay. Uh, actually, in between, they, you, they, they are nowadays focusing on diesel and the naphtha fraction. Okay, which are waxes. They are used as lubricants. Our 2T oils and all what we say are, are falling under this. Okay, and hence the heavy oil fraction. This is the heavy oil fraction. Okay, now I'll pin on what is important for you in the syllabus. In Japan, uh, one minute lo chetta. The crude oil ni heat chesi, steam to heat chesta, actual ga. Heat chesi, in chestaru, vapors ni, e, 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 tower lo ki, pass chesta. Sir, eh, is the mirchadre sir ga, the inter lo. E, 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 mostly, pina, the gases in the ke chooser, e, the bubble caps lo chi, heat chestu well to me. First, gases away the, Aster condense of Kunda by the gas lagane or chest bio, Aviman LPG cylinder in low use chase a gas. Okay, butane main component. Different isomers loan. Sre, Sarvada, first liquid edos in the end of petroleum ether. Okay, Chala low boiling range, thirty to seventy degrees centigrade. Urka the evaporate hypothuntu. Can industrial ga chala important are the solvent in the water. Sre, next knock is important and day petrol. Chala chala important. Motta mana automobile industry ni idhi dictate chesti. Sarvada kerosene. Jet engine santa. Jet se the eva the varta mo. Jet engine ki white petrol varta. Sorry, white kerosene varta. Okay. So adhikura nowadays chala important. Sarvada diesel. Okay. Chala almost 250 degrees centigrade. Okay. Whereas this is 250 degrees centigrade fraction. This is 180 degrees centigrade fraction. This is the same thing. Next, heavy oil fraction. This is the same thing. 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 This of Really sorry. Okay, right. The next heading: important fractions of <coughs> fractional distillation. Commercially important. That's the word. That's a better word. Commercially important fraction of fractional distillation. This you need to remember. Please write it carefully. Okay, because these are asked in exam. Two marks questions. Okay. Commercially important fractions of fractional distillation. Okay. So, here we will be talking about petrol, kerosene and diesel. Okay. Petrol, kerosene and diesel. So, I will write the names here. Petrol, kerosene. Diesel. 
petrol, kerosene, and diesel are the three important fractions. Okay, write like this. It will be easy for you to remember in the exam. <coughs> okay, now first one that is important for us is to write the carbon content of these elements, okay, of these fractions. Okay, so what is the carbon content? Here it is C5 to C9. Carbon is C5 to C9. Write like the way I am writing. Easy to remember in the exact. Okay. Whereas kerosene is C10 to C16. C10 to C16. Okay. Whereas diesel is C10 to actually C18. C10 to C18. Okay. The carbon content. C5 to C9, C10 to C16, C10 to C18. How to remember? Simple. What are, what, how I memorize, I tell you. It starts from 5, ends with 9. 5, 9, 10, 16, 10, 18. If you change here, no problem. This 10 is important. Okay? And hence, this is the question. Okay? That's about the carbon content. Next, the boiling range. Very important. 40 to 120 degrees centigrade. Okay? 40 to 120 degrees centigrade is the boiling range of petrol. <coughs> Kerosene is 180 to 250. Okay. 180 to 250. And here, this is from 250 to 320 degrees centigrade. Okay. Fine, very important points. 320, sorry, 320 degrees centigrade. Okay, next. Calorific value, very important. Calorific value of petrol is 11,250 kilocals per kg. 11,250 11, kilocals per kg is the calorific value. <coughs> Whereas the calorific value of kerosene is 11,100 kilocals per kg. You should write this. Kilocals per kg. Okay. Whereas for diesel, it is 1100. 11,000, sorry. 11,000 kilocals per kg. Okay. And hence, this is the discussion. Fine. This chart, please write it. Easy. Before exam, uh, particularly your mid exam, just once. It is go through. Carbons, carbon content, boiling range, range, calorific value. Three, these three things you need to remember. Okay. So, uh, if you ask me about the applications, okay, what you should always remember is that uh, for petrol is the main fuel that dictates 
a uh, lot of icng particularly four stroke icing genes um are having this as the main material so this is uh, used as fuel for automobiles automobiles like cars bikes etc okay apart from that it is used for <coughs> aeroplanes that's a major application very important okay whereas if you talk about kerosene kerosene is actually is a jet engine oil okay jet engine oil it's a major one it is also used for domestic purposes still in india it's used for domestic purposes and also it is used for uh making various gases like oil gas oil gas is made from kerosene okay excuse me just one okay i'm sorry <clears throat> for the disturbance okay um that's about the kerosene and uh, this is also diesel is also used for icngs in automobile industry okay these are the applications and this chart is very useful for you uh, in your exams okay clear fine now um i'll move to the next very very important topic that is cracking okay before i start explaining about the cracking and uh, all what we, what that was seen in the video <coughs> i have to tell you certain points what points i need to tell you listen see what petrol i am getting from this uh, fractional distillation of crude oil or petroleum is actually not at all use uh, sufficient for us for our applications actually it caters only to the 20% of the requirement now you can imagine how much the world revolves around this crude oil or petroleum and in particularly that petrol that's a point okay so fine uh, when it is not actually serving our utility we will obviously try to explore the other methods okay there are two methods of getting synthetic petrol what you'll be surprised is petrol is made synthetically okay <clears throat> and this has revolutionized the production of petrol okay uh, <clears throat> again german scientists fischer trop uh, are the ones who have made this synthetic petrol okay there are two processes called as burgess process and fischer trop process for making synthetic petrol and catering for the need of the society but, but then that is also not at all sufficient for us okay such is the demand for the petrol so what they have done they started cracking the heavy oil fractions okay just now we have seen uh, in the fractional distillation that uh, there is a fraction called as heavy oil fraction below almost 350 degrees centigrade okay till here till till here 
uh, till diesel will just take away the liquids. They are very lightweight liquids and they can be straight away used. After this, this is called lightweight fraction. Okay, there is middle range fraction, the naphtha fraction. What we use for the lubricants, those 2T oils and the compounds that we require for waxes and our uh, dry cleaning purposes and all. This, that fraction, middle oil fraction is sometimes used. Okay, but there is a other very, very high weight, heavier fractions having boiling range from uh, about 350 degrees centigrade. Those heavy oil fractions I will take and I'll do the crack. Why? I understood that the composition of petrol is from C5 to C9. Okay, so pentane to nonanes is the main composition of petrol. So after understanding that, why can't I break the heavier molecules and get them into the lower weight molecules? Okay, because I'm breaking the heavy weight molecules into lower weight molecules, the process is called as cracking. Okay, water sulfur salt and tarvata fractional distillation. Fractional distillation and separation of <coughs> different liquids from a single liquid. Just like <coughs> passing the white light through, through a prism. We will get the jar colors. Same thing. A crude oil or petroleum ni vapor lo chesi. 450 degrees daka heat chesi. A vapors ni vati uh, vati boiling range ki tagataga separate cheta ni fractional distillation and a definition important. Sir, na kemo chai a withdraw colors la na gold important fractions such as say. Ela separate chai sa depending on their boiling range. Okay. Boiling range ela adha maindi ante. Na kadha maindi. Lower carbon content unna water net ki lower boiling point unna hai. Abhi a tower lo paina remove hai paye. Adhe. Molecular weight pergutu na kodi, what the boiling range pergutu ondi, avi sloga lower part of the tower degara liquid format loki vachas. Okay, dant lo, not important, commercial ga important fraction centi, petrol kerasi, piece it. Okay, dant lo nan tells calls in a chala important thing centi, carbon number boiling range chala. Petrol boiling range 40, 120, kerosene 180, 250. Other diesel 250 to 320. But calorific values are chala chala important. In the petrol ke highest calorific value, 11,250 kcal per kg. And the automobile industry is high dictator to the petrol rate are 100. One liter petrol. Ever buy the one not six rupees. I put OPEC countries actually the petrol rate ne dictate just to untai. Plus the rate I think state wise ka mark unto nemo few rupees. Okay. Or uh, probably it is same now I suppose all throughout the country. I don't know. Earlier it used to be like that. So ne? Ante adhyam ta perikpo to dhan extraction ni batti akada share value dhan ni fluctuate ayna pura la west lo. Where the OPEC nations are Gulf countries. Akar din petrol rate mark po tu tu nikar. Sare alaga high calorific value and hence very very commonly used in automobiles. In koti eleven thousand demo eleven thousand one hundred demo kerosene diesel demo eleven thousand diesel ipur ba var tu na. Var tu naru but maintenance cost high untai. In kante the uh, byproducts that are formed on burning that diesel is uh, are more. So, uh, pet, uh, diesel cost takuna, but uh, maintenance cost take kodu. So, is the discussion. Okay. So, either the petrol or either the na kochindo diesel or kerosene, avanta chala poncho. That long petrol at the marita kua, 20% is alpotunana ki kochi. So, angels sano synthetic petrol just. Vergius process, Fisher Trops process. Run the process lo dwara. Synthetic petrol just like medicines synthetic chest now, ala petrol good a chest. Adigura aim chala du and the heavier fractions of fractional distillation with this kuni 
నేను బ్రేక్ చేస్తాను ఎందుకంటే హై ఫ్రాక్షన్స్ లో హై హై మాలిక్యులర్ వెయిట్ కాంపౌండ్స్ ఉన్నాయి వాటిని లో మాలిక్యులర్ వెయిట్ కాంపౌండ్ కింద కన్వర్ట్ చేస్తున్నాను ఆ ప్రాసెస్ ఏమంటున్నాను డెఫినేషన్ ఓకే మూవింగ్ బెట్ కెటాలిటిక్ క్రాకింగ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఎస్ఏ క్వశ్చన్ దట్ దట్ దే మైట్ బి ఆస్ ఓకే వన్ మోర్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇస్ ద బోర్డ్ క్లియర్ అంటే నేను రాసే బోర్డ్ మీద క్లియర్ గా కనిపిస్తాను కదా మీకు ఓకే సో ఇది డ్రై టాపిక్ అంటే ఇప్పుడు అన్ని అర్థమైపోతే చాలా సూపర్ ఉంది అనిపిస్తుంది ఆ వీడియో చూస్తే ఈజీ ఇంకేం ఎగ్జామ్ ఎలా వెళ్ళేలా ఫట్మన్ రాసేయచ్చు అని కానీ ఆ వాల్యూస్ గుర్తులో వాటికే మార్క్స్ దట్స్ సాడ్ థింగ్ సో వాట్ ఆర్ డ్రై టాక్ ఇస్ డ్రై ఆర్ వెట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ద టైప్ ఆఫ్ కరోజన్ ఏంటంటే ఆ టాపిక్ అర్థమైనట్టే ఉండి రాసేటప్పుడు కష్టమేవన్నీ కొంచెం డ్రై టాపిక్స్ ప్లస్ ఏ పార్ట్ కి ఆ పార్ట్ సపరేట్ లా ఉంటాయి పొడి పొడిగా ఓకే so so i am uh, actually doing cracking process so definition of crack cracking it is it is the process of the process of decomposition it is the process of decomposition brackets breaking hi hi world long it is a process of decomposition of or breaking of of higher hydrocarbons higher hydrocarbons higher hydrocarbons to lower hydrocarbons to low having having less boiling range low low boiling range low boiling range and less molecular weight and low molecular weight okay so what is cracking the process of decomposition or, or breaking of higher hydrocarbons to lower hydrocarbons having low boiling range and less molecular weight definitions are some are many a time many times are and for but it is a number in both things okay so cracking is done in three ways one is thermal cracking the other one is hydro cracking and the third one is catalytic crack okay uh after writing this i want to run the board and give you the flow chart i'm rubbing the board that's the definition okay and this is the flowchart for us to easily remember <coughs> everything so simple what comes to us edana virakottalam po em chestam oka badda rai pet patam anukodtam for example i want to break one coconut what i'll do i'll hit it on a hard surface okay and what you are doing you are applying just pressure so to break something what you should do first thing you should apply pressure then you will apply heat also okay that that is done very commonly for us okay so is the process of crack when i am doing cracking process i'll first apply pressure then i'll apply temperature 
okay if i am just applying pressure and temperature it is called as thermal cracking okay it re, it needs very very high temperatures more than i'd say 500 degrees centigrade and also a very high pressure of 100 uh kg per centimeter square such high pressure and high temperatures i need to do to do the cracking operation okay thermal cracking the thermal cracking is done by taking that heavy oil fraction in the liquid state or sometimes they'll vaporize that liquid and do the cracking operation okay a uh, very crude one but it was followed very very much in the earlier days of crack when the process of cracking they just then began in the inventory stage thermal cracking was very very commonly done now also they'll do it but that is not <clears throat> very effective because the yields are very less okay so they'll not follow but generally but then that is also there the hydro cracking is the best one okay what they do they do the cracking operations by passing hydrogen gas very very fantastic cracking the quality of petrol that i am getting from this type of cracking is the best quality okay but it is really expensive so uh, and the cost of petrol would be really high so in in spite of knowing that uh, this is less commercially applicable okay but they will use it okay what we have in our syllabus is catalytic cracking as the name tells i am doing the cracking operation in the presence of a catalyst at temperatures and pressures which are reasonable and where the yields are also very very good okay and hence this discussion okay so i'll i'll explain about the these three types of crack okay uh, i'm right drawing the flow chart so the cracking is done in three ways Okay. First one is simple thermal cracking. Okay, thermal cracking in which just now I've told with you. I'm just taking the middle oil fraction. I'm applying temperature and pressure. That middle oil fraction, if it is in the liquid state, it is called liquid phase thermal cracking. If it is vaporized, it is called vapor phase thermal cracking. Liquid phase. cracking or it could be vapor phase thermal crack okay <clears throat> next type of cracking which is uh, this is high temperatures high pressures less yield but very very commonly used the next most efficient is hydro cracking is hydro cracking which is done in the presence of hydrogen gas and but the temperatures and pressures are moderate and best quality of petrol and best yields are applied but it is really uh it makes the uh, cost of the petrol high so opted but to a less extent but if i want to take it really commercial i'll do catalytic cracking this is there in your syllabus i'll do catalytic cracking the catalytic cracking which is there in your syllabus okay is done by two methods one is fixed bed catalytic cracking the other one is moving bed catalytic cracking as the name tells i'm using the catalyst along with temperature and pressure the catalyst will reduce the pressure will reduce the temperature will fasten the uh, <coughs> cracking time of cracking and increase the quality of petrol okay that's the role of the catalyst so the catalytic cracking is of two types fixed bed the other one is moving bed catalytic cracking okay what you have in your syllabus is moving bed catalytic cracking fine you have in your syllabus is 
moving bed catalytic vacuum. Okay, for you to remember, I'll just write the requirements and I'll start with it. Okay, because this is there in your syllabus, I'll write here when I'm doing the moving bed catalytic cracking, I'll write temperature, operational temperature is from 500 to 530 degrees centigrade. 500 to 530 degrees centigrade. That's the operational temperature. Pressure of 3 to 4 kgs per centimeter square is used. Pressure is 3 to 4 kgs per centimeter square is used. Okay. And the catalysts that are used are, this is important, catalyst is zeolites, okay, zeolites they say, okay, uh, that is fine powder, fine powder of, fine powder of alumina, that is aluminum oxide, alumina Clay. They say it as Kiesel Guhar clay. Okay. They say it as Kiesel Guhar clay. Okay. Kiesel Guhar clay. Okay. Along with that, Zarcona, Zedar, Chromium, Molybdenum. Nickel are the other uh, ingredients that are used. Okay. They are the components of the catalyst, which is a very, very fine powder. Okay. This you have on hand. You can write the description very, very easily. Please do take them. It is important. 